Hi everybody. Shalom. How's everyone doing? Muchanim, ready to ready to kick this off? Whoever's uh, coming in, make your way in. We'll start with one more nigun. Mohan Gutfeld. <laughs> See if you can catch this melody if you don't know it. The downbeat, just the downbeat on that. Um, those of you on, on Zoom as well.
Yom Tif, I don't know how to say Happy Yom Kippur. I've been thinking about this for days. How to say hello in this moment. I'll just say Shalom, because good Yom Tif doesn't sound right. But we can say Erev Tov or Shalom. So before we light the candles, I'll just remind you all, and those of you especially in the virtual world, of those little preparations we did before Rosh Hashanah. So, in the temple we said, before we prayed, we would wash our hands, so everybody wash your hands. Yeah, feel your hands. You can also, uh, our, our ancestors, probably not that long ago, would maybe earlier today have gone to the river to dip their whole bodies in the water. You can feel it on your, on your whole body. We're going to smell the incense, so take a few breaths. And we're going to bring our korban. So those of you in the virtual, if you have brought an object of meaning into your space with your computer or whatever device you're on, why don't you go bring that? Or if you haven't and you weren't here on Rosh Hashanah, then think of some kind of object that would be an object of meaning that will help you mark the space. And those of you here in the space, you can imagine any object of meaning that you're in your imagination are bringing here right now. I'd like to invite Jody Hecht and Emily Melser to light the candles for us. One more. Welcome. Amen. Beautiful, thank you. <laughs> That's my little guy yelling out there. Please rise for the Kol Nidre. Repeat these words after me. Oh, Zawal Atzadi. Uli Yishrei Lev. Simcha. Light is planted for the just. and happiness for honest hearts. Be yeshiva shel ma'ala Be yeshiva shel ma'ata על הדת המקום ועל הדת הקהל אנו מתירים להתפלל עם העבריאני
in the house of learning up there. And in the house of learning down here. We invite our God. And we invite this community to pray with our fellow sinners.
I'd like to invite Alison Schlanger to come and hold our Torah for us. All the promises and the vows and the commitments, everything we swore to ourselves that we would do and that we would not do this past year, are hereby annulled. All the vows and the obligations and the commitments everything we will swear to ourselves that we will do and not do between today and Yom Kippur in one year, all of those things are annulled, scrapped, wiped out, deleted. They don't exist they are nothing we are liberated from them all we are in this moment free we are for this moment free
ונסלח לכל הדת בני ישראל ולגר הגר בתוכם כי לכל העם בשגגה The entire community is forgiven for being human I think that's what these words mean Let's try and say it together. We are forgiven for being human. Here we go. We are forgiven for being human. Shechian. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Shechianu vekiyemanu vehegianu lazman Now I feel a bit more at ease after getting that heavy bit out of the way. So welcome everybody. And welcome everybody in Canada and in Brazil and in Jerusalem and everywhere you are. It's wonderful to be here with you all. It's a strange thing we just prayed that all of our commitments are gone. But I think what it's supposed to tell us is that now we're supposed to pray and really recommit ourselves to doing all the things that we know we need to do out of our own volition, without some threat coming at us from above. Sorry, please rise for the Baruch following in the blue machzorim, we're on page 252, and if you're in the virtual booklet, we're on page 6. We're going to read silently until we get to the Shema on page 8.
שמע ישראל, אדוני אלוהינו, אדוני אחד. שמע וקשרתם לאות על ידיך, והיו לתותפות בין עיניך, וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובישעריך. למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי, והייתם קדושים לאלוהיכם. אני אדוני אלוהיכם, אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים, להיות לכם לאלוהים. אני אדוני אלוהיכם. We continue silently for until 261. מי כמוך באלים אדוני, מי כמוך נדר בקודש נורת אילות, אוסף אלה מלכותך ראו בניך בוקע ים לפני משה, זה לי ענו ואמרו, אדוני ימלוך לעולם בעד. ונאמר כי פדה אדוני את יעקב וגלו מיד חזק ממנו, ברוך אתה אדוני גאל ישראל. השכיבנו אדוני אלוהינו לשלום ועמידנו מלכנו. לחיים ופרוס עלינו סוכת שלומך, ותקננו בעצה טובה מלפניך.
Spread over us your peace-filled sukkah and over all we love, over our Jerusalem and yours. Go with us, ufros aleinu sukkat shlomecha. Hey, Trip, can I get that drum beat we were talking about? 265 <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Wanna give us some beats? Play play some drums for us. Pick us up, we need a pickup. Let's go. Yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying, work those fingers. There we go. Yeah, go for it, Frank. Let's go. Anybody else? Mirandi, you want to go? None of us knew that would happen. <laughs> we're about to pray the Amidah. I'd like to remind those of you especially who were on the Rosh Hashanah morning call of the body work that we did. So, and those of you who weren't, we were kind of trying to bring our bodies into this prayer, this standing prayer. And I want to give you a heads up about what's going to happen at the end of this prayer, because it's going to be slightly untraditional. So, Normally, the Amidah ends with Oseh Shalom B'Mu'amav, the prayer for peace. We've approximated that this year. There's a uh, string quartet by Beethoven, Opus 132, which Beethoven wrote as a 
prayer of thanksgiving for recovering from an illness. He was very sick. When he became well again, he wrote this quartet. It's one of the most beautiful, I think, that I've heard at least, of his string quartets. I asked Jonathan if he would um, make a little arrangement of this for our not very string quartet orchestra here tonight. So we have, you'll see, it's a very special arrangement with Frank London on the uh, trumpet, Jonathan on the cello, Mirandi on the violin, and John on the canoon. So when that happens, that'll be kind of your cue to kind of finish up whatever you're doing. You actually have a few options. Um, those of you who are on Zoom, it's pages 10 to 17 in the virtual machzol. Those of you who are here in person, uh, there's the traditional Amidah is on pages 156 to 171, and then it kind of skips for the vidui, the confession, to page 279, and you have 279 to 285. I'm sorry it's so complicated. And there's an alternative reading if you want to just stick to that. That's on pages 270 to 285 in the blue booklet. Now that's not the end of what I need to prepare you for because as soon as the Beethoven piece will be finished, we're gonna watch a little piece of a play. And that's going to happen right here. Yeah, does anybody need to move? You guys are in charge of the moving, okay. So uh, once you hear the Beethoven, if you guys are in the back there or in the, in the back there, I guess you guys should be able to see it. But those of you who are in the back, I invite you to maybe kind of step a little forward. You can't move your chairs because they're very specifically placed for social distancing. But I invite you to kind of come and stand maybe back here or come a bit closer over here, okay? And there will be, um, there will be a, a short piece of a play. It's not very long. And it has to do with Chana, who we, um, we were learning about on Rosh Hashanah who kind of taught the Jews how to pray. That's her story, or one way to tell it. So all of those introductions bring us to the Amidah, and we turn to face the east, which I have no idea where that is. Anyone? Over there? Austin, you're confusing everybody. I trust him. You trust, you trust I trust him. <laughs> Somebody's got an app. Are we? East. This way. That way. That way? Okay. Um, all right. Um, I, I'll just say that in terms of uh, standing, we've been doing a lot of standing, and especially the kids are doing an amazing job so far. Um, uh, once you hear the Beethoven, then you can feel free to either stay standing or sit down. I'm just finding my, uh, my own spot here. Adonai Sfatai Tiftach ufi yagid teilatecha. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו ואלוהי אבותינו ואמותינו אלוהי אברהם אלוהי יצחק ואלוהי יעקב אלוהי שרה אלוהי רבקה אלוהי לאה ואלוהי רחל האל הגדול הגיבור והנורא אל עליון גומל חסדים טובים וקונה הכל וזוכר חסדי אבות ואימהות ומביא גואל לבני בניהם למען שמו באהבה זוכרנו לחיים מלך חפץ בחיים וכותבנו בספר החיים למענך אלוהים חיים מלך עוזר ומושיע ומגן ברוך אתה אדוני מגן אברהם ועזרת שרה אתה גיבור לעולם אדוני מחייבת עם אתה רב להושיע 
מחלקל חיים בחסד, מחיים מתים ברחמים רבים, סומך נופלים ורופא חולים, ומתיר אסורים, ומקיים אמונתו לישני עפר, מחמוך בעל גבורות, ומדום אלך, מלך ממית ומחיה. ומצמיח ישוע, מי כמוך אב הרחמים זוכר יצוריו לחיים ברחמים. ונאמנת לאחיות מתים, ברוכת אדוני, מחיה המתים. We continue silently.
is childless. Each year, she, along with her husband, Elkina, and his other wife, Panina, and her children, travel to the temple at Shiloh to worship and offer sacrifice. We witness Hannah's suffering as Panina ridicules her because she has no children. Every year is the same for Hannah, but this year, we
fears disturbing you? No, you are not my God. My God knows that I have no interest in wine. My God knows that I am a woman of hardened spirit. My God knows that I am pouring out my soul like water. My God knows that I am not afraid of you. Because I am not afraid of telling God or you the naked truth. My God speaks back to me when I call out in righteous anger in a storm of emotion. <sighs> My God does not judge me by what I look like. My God sees me and knows that I am not worthless. You and I may see into each other's eyes, but God sees into the heart. <laughs> Thank you. That was Avia, Hallie, and Grayson. Thank you. One, one more round of applause. And Jonathan on the cello, and that was directed by Michael Posnick and written in a fashion that I had never really done before. But um, uh, I, was, I was studying this particular story with a rabbi in Philadelphia, or a soon-to-be rabbi named Nicole Fix. And she's another theater rabbi type. And so um, we came up with this. How many of you, how many of you when, when, uh, when Grayson said, this is different, how many of you did that resonate with? <laughs> Different. I think, it, I think it was. Strong. So, I want to say a few words. In part, I want to say a few words about like why you guys just sat through that and watched that, and why we brought this particular story. 
And in part, I just want to talk about where I'm at and where the world is. And in another part, I want to talk to my son, who's sitting right here. That's Matan. Everybody say, hi, Mady LaRue. <laughs> just kidding, he hates that. Don't say that. <laughs> On Yom Kippur, I'm sorry, matey. Um, so, hopefully you guys will understand by the end of this why, why we watch this play and why Hannah and why we're going to watch the rest of it tomorrow uh, in the afternoon service. So, I've been having a lot of amazing conversations with people. Um, many of you here tonight. Um, many of you joined these uh, learning pods, the Chevrutot that we started. There have been, for those of you who don't know, there have been these like groups of learning on like 11 different topics that people have just been kind of coming together and reading stuff and talking about. And it's been very, very powerful um, for me personally to witness it, but I think also for a lot of the people. Um, even even uh, some of the melodies that you guys heard tonight came out of the Nigunim Chevruta. Um, so, uh, <laughs> all of these conversations have been really amazing, but there was one thing that really stuck with me from the last 10 days, and that's what Matan said to me, uh, or not to me, but to all of us who were there at Tashlich um, a little bit over a week ago. So, I asked the question at Tashlich, what's more important, listening or speaking out? Which is the more important? And Matan, he had two answers, but it was the second one that really kind of stuck with me. Uh, what you said to me, since you probably don't remember, is when you're talking to God, listening is more important. Which I thought, you know, yes, definitely. But um, I, uh, I did listen to you and I thought about it, Matan, and now I want to speak to you a little bit. So I want, I want to I kind of respond to what you're proposing. And the reason I want to do that is because speaking to God is what we're here for. It's one way of saying, what are we here for? Why, why are we here? Why did we come here for Kol Nidre? Why, are, why do we do this every year? One of the reasons that we, one of the answers, one of the possible answers is we're here to speak to God. And I know, of course, that a lot of the people in this room don't believe in God or this tent, and a lot of the people in, on Zoom um, aren't sure what they believe, and, and you know, there's different ideas of what that means or doesn't mean. And really, I don't think that matters so much for, the point of the, for, the, for, for this conversation, because we're all here to connect with something. We're all here to connect with some kind of source some source of maybe truth, some, something, something with our people, something with ourselves, our history, our collective or individual minds. We're here to connect with that. So the tradition has one way of expressing this notion, and that's the following, which you may have heard in synagogues here and there. Adonai Eloichem emet. Adonai Eloichem emet means Adonai your God, is truth. What's truth? That's what God is. That's, you know, one of the expressions. Chana, who you just saw in the play, she knew about truth and she knew about speaking to God. Those are two things she really kind of knew about. So that's the beginning of why, why we're dealing with her. Matan. The rabbis tell us than in order to repent properly on Yom Kippur. How many words of truth do we have to utter? Take a guess. Matan says 10. Any other, any other guesses? Who said one? There we go. Yes. Thank you, Jeff. Um, um, one. In order to repent, repent properly over the course of this Yom Kippur, all we have to do is say one truthful word. That's all it takes. Doesn't sound too hard. Does that sound hard? No, doesn't sound, doesn't sound all that hard, right? Well, um, it's not 
actually that easy, turns out. Truth is very tricky. And in some regards, this may be a surprise to the kids and maybe something your parents don't really want to tell you. And definitely, Matan, I don't really want to tell you. But I'm going to tell you that our society actually, in many, in many ways, teaches us to not speak the truth. In what, one of the chevrutas was about Hannah Arendt's essay called Truth and Politics. Here's what she says in Truth and Politics. Throughout history, the truth seekers and truth tellers have been aware of the risks of their business. As long as they did not interfere with the course of the world, they were covered with ridicule. But he who forced his fellow citizens to take him seriously by trying to set them free from falsehood and illusion was in danger of his life. If they could lay hands on such a man, they would kill him. That's what Plato says in the last sentence of the cave allegory. So all of us are sitting here in Plato's cave. Yeah, you guys know this, uh, kids, you guys know this? Uh, you know the Plato, Plato's cave says basically, um, all of us human beings are sitting in a cave looking at shadows coming from light that's coming from outside, and we think that's reality, but that's not reality. Yeah, it's just shadows. So all of us are sitting here pretty comfortably in our cave, and um, we're looking at the shadows. And if someone, if someone came in here and told us, you know, you're looking at shadows, what would we do? What would we want to do? Kill him. Yeah, that's what, that's what Arendt says. We'd want to kill that person. And we might actually go ahead and kill that person. It's, it's happened before, not once and not twice. I, uh, it reminds me of one of my favorite Jack Nicholson lines. You guys remember A Few Good Men? You want the truth. You can't handle the truth. You guys remember that? Yes? No? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't think I have to tell you what has happened to this word, truth, over the last few, few years in our, you know, public sphere. Um, Matan's, Matan tells me these jokes about it, about speaking to people who tell you that two plus two is five, and when you tell them it's not, they, they accuse you of watching too much CNN. So, you know, there's a, there's, that, that's, a, that's a problem, and we see it with our kids also, but we see, it, we see it with ourselves, and I think that part of this kind of pang pandemic angst that we're experiencing has to do with the shakiness of truth, and that we're, we're actually a little uncomfortable. But there is actually uh, an even deeper problem, because even if we wanted to speak the truth, our tradition <laughs> tells us that this may not be so easy. Yeah? Another one of these chevrutas was the book of Proverbs. So in the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, is, uh, it's a monologue by wisdom. And this is what wisdom says. Wisdom says, Ki emet fatai resha. My gut gives voice to truth, and my lips despise lies. That's what wisdom says. Yeah, her gut gives voice to truth, and her lips despise lies. So the truth is that our process, I think, our process of uh, speaking, of bringing words, uh, starts kind of similarly. In our gut, things are really true. Yeah, if you put your hand on your gut, you know, there's been mo many moments in the last even week in which each of us have felt the truth in our gut, right? And first of all, um, I, I think it's important to, to, to point out that uh, whether truth feels, you know, shaky or not, there is, um, in our gut, 
this truth. It's important to remember that our guts really do give voice to truth. We know, we know. Whatever's going on out there inside in our belly, we really do know, yeah? And, and therefore, we know certain truth because, because we're wired that way. But it's a little different the rest of the process for us, right? So if, tr- if, tr- if wisdom can kind of uh, utter, a, feel the truth here, and then, you know, it comes up, and by the time it's in the lips, it can't come out a lie because her lips hate lies. For us, it's very different. There's a whole process that these things go through. And uh, it goes through, it starts down here, right? So if we're in the gut, it's going to climb up. It's going to go through our lungs. It's going to come up through our chest. It's going to get to our throat. It'll, from the throat, it'll, it'll come to our tongue and then our, and then our lips, and then it's out, right? But each of those spots can be a real challenge to keep it real. It's very, very hard. That's the honest truth. Um, there's, there's, uh, there's all kinds of things that can happen along the way. There's, there's fears. There's our doubts. There's uh, embellishments, half-truths, non-truths. There's polite figures of speech. You know, by the time it's out, it's very, it's very, very different. It's, uh, um, it's, it's, it's not what it was inside, yeah. Now, there's another problem. I'm going to give us one more obstacle before I try and bring us to some kind of conclusion-ish thing. And that is um, that uh, uh, this came out of our Ecclesiastes uh, learning pod where we, where we figured out that actually translation is impossible. It's impossible to translate one language to the next. If I say to you, shalom, what does that mean? Right? It means a variety of things. And even if you go with those, if I said to you, shalom, you know, that's a, that, that's, that's a, that's a, you know, part of the background for me. And shalom was a sticker on my, on my fridge when I was growing up because we were all praying and working for peace back then in Israel. And so, you know, so it's got that context. In other words, every word that we say has a whole context to, you know, what we each, what we each, you know, feel when we say that word. I can say to you the word justice. I can say to you the word heart or the word um, angry. To each one of us, these things are these things are different, and not, not only are they they're also different at different moments. They're different. They're they're very different. So it's very hard to translate. Um, sorry, I have a lot of uh, little asterisks here in my thing that I can't find my spot. Um, but yes, Chana. So that brings me to Chana. Um, there's a question of like how how does she uh, how does how does she do it? How does she manage to bring that gut out through the mouth like we saw in that like we saw in that play? So how does she speak and how does she speak to God in particular? And and this is what the Talmud tells us. The Talmud says you guys can repeat after me. Hiticha, dvareha, klapei mala. She hurled her words upward. Yeah, in other words, what did she do? She took her words, just like you were doing with the football before, and she throws them at God. That's her method. Yeah, that's, that's what the Talmud tells us. Yeah, she, she threw, throws them as hard as she can at God. Chana is like a master teacher who can help us maneuver, maneuver all these obstacles through this kind of directness that she, that she comes up with. We saw it a little bit in the play, I think. Here's, here's part of her process. We'll see more tomorrow. She listens to her feelings. Yeah? You guys saw how she was <laughs> moved by her feelings? She processes. She doesn't deny what she's going through. 
We are all going through a ton of stuff right now, a ton of stuff. It's like, un, oh, it's, it's hard, hard to even like uh, put it in a box. It's hard to put it in one word. It's hard to put it in anything. We're going through way too much right now. This is, a, this is, this is an impossible period, impossible and painful. Chana says, don't deny that. Don't run away from that. Be with that, right? Be with your fear, like, like Pema Chodron tells us. She lets her body respond. She sees who she's speaking to. Did you see that moment right before she started speaking to the high priest? You know, she sees him. That's another piece of our, of our process here. This is another piece of who are we actually speaking to? Okay, we're going through stuff, we're, you know, but then somebody speaks to us, we have to see who that person is and how is that person able to hear or not hear. And then she just lets the words out, whatever comes out. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not the politeness that we're used to. It's not. In Israel, we're a little bit freer on that regard and I really don't recommend that we go in that direction. But... <laughs> But, um, but uh, um, she, she allows it out. When we, when, we, when we speak to God, even when we speak to each other, we should let it out. We got to be honest with each other. So we are not Chana. We're mere 21st century pandemic time New Yorkers and other places. So we can't, we're not really tasked with the same thing she's tasked with, but we are tasked with this one word, this one word. So, um, the rest of tonight, tomorrow, tomorrow evening, let's see if we can, if we can pray like Hannah, if we can actually, you know, be with, be with where we're at and try and express something in that way. We're used to these, like, blessed art thou, God this, God that. Chana wasn't into that. Chana was, she really, she wasn't. She wasn't. Chana, and, the, and the rabbis saw it and were like, that's the way we're supposed to be doing this. Talk for real. Talk for real. So if, you, if, if those words in the, in the machzor are, are not helping you, then ditch them. And, and you know, find your, find your way to do it. Yeah. So we need one word. And Matan, you're right that um, listening is far more important. It's far more important, I think. But um, without speaking out at all, we have failed. That's a truth. Without, without managing to speak, to say one word at least, we've failed. So... We're about to sing this song, Ki Anu Amecha. And um, it's, uh, uh, one of the lines in there is, Anu Banecha Ve'ata Avinu. We are your sons, and you are our father. Yeah. So I think if we take Chana's example, you know, that's the type of, we want a real relationship with these words. You can call it God or not, but with these words. Matan and I, right, like, we, we fight, and, we, and we, we do all kinds of things, and we love, and we do all kinds of things, and that's, that's a relationship. So that's what, I, that's what I'm trying to get through here, is we're looking for a relationship in, this, in these prayers. We're looking for a relationship. And there's something in there for us with ourselves and, and with each other. Anu Amecha, please rise.
on page 18 in the virtual machzol, or 278, the bottom, I think, and 278 for the blue machzol. to invite Rob Milam to say a few words. Maybe I can't move that. Can you hear me in the back? Yes. So I like the rabbi's greeting, Shalom. Thanks for everybody for being here tonight. Rabbi, thank you for leading us on a beautiful ceremony. And I don't know if anybody said it's not, it's not like a wedding speech here, but you know, I do think I want to thank Susan and Gene and the musicians and everybody else for you know, putting this together for us to, um, to be here together and, and to the VOD, which I'm a part of, and I'll explain that. The VOD is the board. I didn't know what a VOD was either. It's OK for anybody else who didn't know. But there's a, there's a whole bunch of people that have been putting time and minds and into helping create what we're doing here together. So as the rabbi said, I'm Rob Milam. I'm the treasurer, so we also do have a treasurer. So there's, there's a story behind that. And I've met some of the folks here, and there's a lot of people I haven't met before. And, and I'd, I'd love to meet you at the right time in the future. And while you may not recognize me, maybe you recognize my beautiful daughters. 
Last year they joined the weavers on the BEMA, which I don't, I can't say that I understood exactly what the weaving was for, but the two hours of entertaining my kids was excellent, and I, <laughs> I, I do thank them, for, thank them for that. It was wonderful. Um, so look, th by a few words, I'm going to make a few more than that, but this is the Col Nidre appeal. So when I was telling my kids, what, are, what am I doing tonight? So I'm making an appeal. What's an appeal? Well, I'm going to give a talk. Like a speech? Yes. Okay, what are you going to do in your speech? I'm going to ask for money. Don't we have any money? <laughs> yes. We're, it's not for us. It's okay. But it's an ancient Jewish tradition where somebody off in the treasure stands in front of the congregation and pleads and begs for cash, checks. I'd like you to know in the modern age, too, this shul, we also take credit cards. We take Venmo. We take Zelle. And effective next week, Susan, next week, we will now have a securities account again. So perhaps you can give us one share of Google, <laughs> five shares of Apple. We, stock split, we need more. Um, so how this is going to work, and where's the camera so I can also, are the Zoomers over here? Hi, and thank you. Even better if you're Zooming tonight, because what we're going to do, hopefully, in the back, we're going to put some links in, but don't do anything yet. We're going to make it real easy. We're going to put the Venmo handle. We'll put the website address. We'll put a link. You can throw some money in the chat. Just put a number, a dollar number. Send a message to the new shul. We'll call you. We'll take your pledge. And in the, in the tent with us, so everybody should have a little card and a little envelope. No pens required. I thought this was brilliant last year. All you have to do is fold up a little tab. Don't do it yet. I'm going to see if I can inspire you to give more than you otherwise might. <laughs> Just be patient. And at Rabbi Misha's fine suggestion in this time of great need, and no jokes for this part, but very serious time of need, what we'd also like to do is uh, give Sadaka tonight. That's very hard without speaking to everybody and knowing their personal cause, which, which we could pick. And... Across the VOD, what we decided to do, if you're so comfortable in doing so, we've also selected, at Misha's suggestion, the New York Coalition for the Homeless, and we'd like to help. And perhaps you can consider giving an extra 10% tonight. You may not know, I, I think I knew these numbers, there's 60,000 New Yorkers in homeless shelters on any given night, almost 15,000 families, and last year, I believe, one in every hundred babies that was born in New York City, when they went home, they went to a shelter. So again, I think we can put the link, hopefully, to their website in the Zoom. If you're so willing, you can give some money directly. You can, when you make a pledge, you can add it. I think on these pledge cards, we'd be quite happy. You can pick, if you're so willing, two. Put one for the shul, maybe one to the, the left you can add for, uh, for a great cause. And really is our, I think the rabbi can talk about this, almost our obligation, not just to, to do, to give to charity. Uh, but now to the, to the main part. So what I'd, I'd like to talk about, and maybe this will resonate with some of you, is my own personal story with Judaism. Everybody likes to talk about themselves, so I'll talk about me. <laughs> and each of us has our own unique journey with our faith and how we got to where we are here tonight together. But all of us, I think we all can share that in common, too. Each part, maybe a little bit of mine will be something you went through. Or maybe for the younger folks, maybe not yet, but you might get there. I grew up in Idaho. That's a state. It's way out to the left. For the last 20 years, usually with 0% of precincts reporting, it goes for Bush or something else like that. And we had one temple. We drew, drove 50 miles to get to temple. Fortunately, it was a Temple Emmanuel. They have branches everywhere. So we drive down. I thought that used to be what all the, all the synagogues were called. And on a Friday in the land of the, the great diaspora of Idaho to go to, to Temple, I can't say that that was what I really looked forward to doing. We didn't have a rabbi. We had a dentist. <laughs> he was great, though. When I was 13, I had my bar mitzvah. So you see my, my talus, which uh, I was told was made by the blind Jews in Israel, which that may or may not have been true, but it sounded excellent. And the, the thought of weaving this with 
uh, while you're blind. Um, I mean, I couldn't, certainly couldn't do it with both eyes, so, so quite impressive. And on my bar mitzvah, I, I think I made $762 in gifts, which was the most fabulous day of my life to that point. Um, really wonderful. But growing up in the land of non-Jews as a Jew, I can't say that I, I felt like it resonated or that I found, found my community. I came east for college in New Jersey. For the Jew from the land of non-Jews, I had, I had found the Jews. <laughs> my wife doesn't know this story. It's okay. It's, it's totally fine. But I, I met my freshman year, and I, I met a young woman, and it turned out she was Jewish. And I said, I'm Jewish. And she looked at me with a blank face, like, okay. <laughs> I don't think I'd ever met a Jewish girl my age before. It was very exciting. <laughs> But now in the land of Jews, the Jew from the non-Jews in the land of the Jews, and I can't say that I really felt like I fit in there either. It was a, an interesting time. And I came to New York, because really that's where we all came when we need a job. And I went to work, I went out, I made friends. And once a year, a friend of mine had invited me, and I went to Temple. New York's an odd place. I think the, well, we have a million Jews and only 50,000 seats in Temple, so it's always a an interesting time of year when we all, we all want to go. And I did what I've done at the, sometimes the new shul. I mean, we usually sit in the balcony. At, and I went, and I listened to the music, and I listened to the rabbi. I eventually met my wife, my beautiful wife over here. And Shama and I, we were married by the rabbi, and it was a wonderful wedding. One of the most beautiful days of my life. I would have said the most, but I have three children and they weren't, they weren't there, so we have to be <laughs> inclusive. But after a while, the, the rabbi retired and I hadn't made friends, so I hadn't really built community and we, we drifted. And for us, we realized as we were, I said to my kids, I said, we're getting older. And they said, Daddy, you're, you're not old, you're just middle. <laughs> Which I, that's something else, but <laughs> it happened again. So a friend of mine invited me to the new shul a few years ago. And again, we came, and we thought about things that were important to us and our kids. And my wife had said to me, my wife, after we got married, and I hadn't thought much about it. She said, I want the kids to be Jewish. And I thought that was, that was wonderful. And I said, why? And she said, well, there's a billion Hindus but there really aren't very many Jews, and maybe we could, we could, we could help out, we'll repopulate. <laughs> I mean, take what you can get, right? So, but as uh, my kids with our, our beautiful Hindus, which sounds better than Judus, <laughs> how are they going to get comfortable with their Jewish faith, and how are we going to teach them, and what will be their community, and what we'll be part of? So earlier this year, very early this year, this is a long year, isn't it? Back when we used to meet people in person over a coffee at a small table less than six feet apart, and I met with David and the president, I met with Susan, and they said, would you consider perhaps we could use some help? Maybe you could be the treasurer. And I think there's also a Jewish tradition of saying no, <laughs> which I was quite happy to say, no, thank you. I'm very busy. Would you please reconsider? We'll make it a treasure with a lowercase t. We won't take up too much of your time. Okay. Okay, I'll do that. Because you know it's important to me, actually. It's important to me that my, my family has a place to be. And, and where are we going to be without, without helping, without being part of our community? So this year, too, the rabbi retired. But this year, I'm staying. My family's staying. And we want to be here with this community. And I've made friends. And the Vod has welcomed me my family, and they call me, sometimes during the work day, it's okay. <laughs> and so what I'm asking you tonight is to, to give. I think Susan very elegantly at Erev asked you to be a member. Tonight I'm asking you to give. We need your donations. We're not in the best financial shape. This has been a hard year for the shul too. But the music, the tent, the programming, 
We have Sukkot and Simhat Torah on the 11th. We're going to start Kabbalah Shabbat again on the 23rd. Our staff. So it's not free. We need your help. I hope you'll give generously tonight. We'll take your time. We'll also take your heart. We'll take your love. Tonight, we also particularly need your money. And I think, again, as an inclusive shul, if you're a capitalist, you understand it's not free. Please give some money. If you're a socialist, you can give somebody else's money. <laughs> but either way, we'd be happy to have it. And these little cards, the ushers will collect them, we'll leave them in the back. But hopefully what we can do, and with your help, and we're building this place, and the learning pods, and our community, and our togetherness, and I know I've, I've looked forward to the Fridays, to Zooming, to seeing everybody, to making a prayer. And I'd love to continue to do that with you for next year and the years beyond. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Rob and many others really deserve a lot of thanks for this um, evening and these whole these whole holidays, really, it's been a beautiful it's been beautiful coming into this community and seeing the way people come in. It's really a special thing in this shul. So um, thank you. And if I, if uh, Rob, you you inspired me um, by talking so beautifully about your family. I just want to say thank you to Erica. Thank you, baby. Um, um, Thank you. No, we don't need hands. But uh, no, no. It's it's been it's been a lot of it's been a lot to handle uh, with uh, these holidays, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. I'd like to invite Rob's girls to open the ark. That's Raya, Ashlyn, and Nalani. And you all can please rise. Nice. 
Page 279 in the Mahzor. And page 15 in the virtual Mahzor. Hello, I know, and I have a tenu. אמותינו, תבוא לפניך תפילתנו ואל תתעלם מתחינתנו. שאין אנחנו עזי פנים וקשי עורף לומר לפניך, אדוני אלוהינו ולא אבותינו ואמותינו, צדיקים אנחנו ולא חטאנו, אבל אנחנו חטאנו. God of those who sought you out in ages past, let our prayer also come before you. Do not turn aside from our entreaty. For we are not so obstinate and stubborn as to say before you we are righteous. We have done no wrong, for indeed we have done wrong. And we join now in confession before you. Ashamnu Bagadnu Gazalnu Dibarnu Dofi a short reading. Does this poem have a name? It's part of the prayers. It's part of the traditional prayers. I don't, I've never seen it with a title. Gotcha. <laughs> um, then I give you a Kol Nindari reading. What are we? What are our lives? What is our kindness, our righteousness, our strength, our courage? What can we say in front of you, Adonai, our God, and God of our mothers and fathers? All heroes are like dust next to you, and people of renown 
like vanished smoke. The wisest are fools and the most knowledgeable ignorant. All they do is participate in the chaos and the days of their lives are a mist of nothingness in front of you. A human and a beast are the same, for everything is a mist of nothingness. Which may be bleak, but sometimes so is Yom Kippur. <laughs> I'd like to invite Jim to say a quick word, Rabbi Ponet. Um, can we find him over there on the Zoom? Jeremy, I know I didn't prepare you for this, but we're about to say the Alchet, the confession of the various sins, and I wanted Jim to prep us a little bit, maybe say a word or two about these sins or about punishment and the way that bleakness that Michael just said plays into this holiday. Thank you. These are the problems. Number one, uh, education, learning, growing, sometimes feels enormously painful. But to believe, stir, which is integral to our cult parts of this thing. You can be punished for telling the truth in our cult. But what we've established tonight, especially in the young people, is that telling the truth, confessing, also means finding, having confidence that you can speak of the own truth without being brutalized, without being ostracized, without being punished. In Jewish law, there is no need for a Fifth Amendment, no need for Miranda. A warning. Because whatever you say about yourself, whatever you confess in criminal law, is unaction, doesn't stand as evidence, cannot convict itself. This is insane from the point of view of any legal system. One of the best sources of so called legal truth is indeed confession. But Jewish law removes it from consideration. Why? So it was to make it possible to tell your truth without being incarcerated, without being isolated, without being removed. It's an encouragement to tell the truth. And that's what our head is about. And when you tell the truth, it turns out your truth is not an isolated truth, it's a shared truth. When you fail, I am cheated. The alphabet can barely contain all the failures. But we sang this didn't we, just moments ago. It kind of blues you guys to look one to sing it a little more upbeat turn our failures that we can confess into a shared song of maybe I'll get it better next time. But I did cheat. I did lie. I did steal. I really messed up. <coughs> Somehow, from within, at the gut level that Misha was talking about, to feel having, feel relief, feel comfort, feel part of something larger, for sharing my own shame for that's what you do. We don't do it every day, but we do it this day. This day is the time by that freedom. So, thank you. Thank you. Jim. Thank you. And thank you all to please rise. We're on page 282. on page 16 in the Mechzol. Why don't we do it this way? Um, we can, those of you who can read the Hebrew, let's read the Hebrew together. And those of you who can read the English, we'll read the English together. All right, here we go. We're at the bottom of page 282. על חטא שחתנו לפניך באונס וברצון ועל חטא שחתנו לפניך באימוץ הלב על חטא שחתנו לפניך בבלי דעת For the wrong we did before you under coercion of our own free will and for the wrong we did before you by hardening our hearts 
for the wrong we did before you unintentionally, and for the wrong we did before you through idle talk and meaningless resolutions, for the wrong we did before you by using sex exploitatively, for the wrong we did before you in public and in private, for the wrong we did before you knowingly and deceptively, and for the wrong we did before you by offensive language, for the wrong we did before you by oppressing another person, and for the wrong we did before you by malicious thoughts, and for the wrong we did before you by promiscuity, and for the wrong we did before you by confessing insincerely, for the wrong we did before you by contempt for parents and teachers, and for the wrong we did before you by violence, for the wrong we did before you by failing to be true to our heritage, thus defaming your name in the world, and for the wrong we did before you by unbridled passion. Ve'al kulam Eloha selichot Slach lanu Mechalanu Kapelanu Al chet shechatanu lefanecha Bekacha shuv chazav Ve'al chet shechatanu lefanecha Bechapat shochad for the wrong we did before you by lying and deceiving, and for the wrong we did before you by accepting bribes, for the wrong we did before you by scoffing and mocking, and for the wrong we did before you by speaking ill of other people, for the wrong we did before you in our work, and for the wrong we did before you in the foods we eat and the amount we drink, for the wrong we did by refusing to be generous, and for the wrong we did before you by being proud and haughty, for the wrong we did before you in rejecting your authority, and for the wrong we did before you in making harsh judgments on other people. For all our wrongs, O God of forgiveness, forgive us, wipe the slate clean, grant us atonement. For the wrong we did before you by plotting against others, and for the wrong we did before you by tormenting others, for the wrong we did before you by dismissing serious matters with a joke, and for the wrong we did before you by being obstinate, for the wrong we did before you by running to do evil, and for the wrong we did before you by gossiping, for the wrong we did before you by swearing falsely, and for the wrong we did before you by hating others without cause, for the wrong we did before you by betraying a trust, and for the wrong we did before you out of confusion, unaware of the significance of our actions. Ark for the Avinu Malkeinu. You guys want to help? Thank you. 
Mourner's Kaddish. I'm going to pass my gaze around the room. If when my eyes hit your general direction, if you're thinking of someone who has passed, please speak their name. And those of you on Zoom, please add the names into the chat. and Marilyn Waldman. It gadal ve it kadash shemer abba ve'alma divra chirutei ve'amlich malchutei v'chayechon u'v'yomechon u'v'chayed echol bet Yisrael ba'agala u'v'zman kari ve'imu amen yehei shemer abba mevorach le'olam u'l'almei al-maya yitbarach ve'ishtabach ve'itpa'ar ve'itromam ve'itnaseh ואית הדר ואית הלב ואית הלל שמי דקודשה בריחו לאלה מן כל ברכתה ושירתה תוש בחתה ונחמתה דאמירן בעלמה ואמרו אמן יהי שלמה רבה מן שמיה וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן עושה שלום במרומיו הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ועל כל יושבי תבל ואמרו אמן Thank you. Please have a seat. I'd like to invite Susan for some announcements. Um, I want to start by a little bit of an extended list to thank people. Um, but this is an extraordinary undertaking. And I really want to thank the amazing team of people who've helped me. The musicians, Yanatan Gutfeld, Marandi Hastetter, Trip Dudley, John Murchis Murchison, and Frank London. Thank you. The wonderful performers led by director Michael Posnick, Avia Hernstadt, Hallie Chinetsky, Grayson Bradshaw. Our teachers who worked tirelessly with the kids and been amazing, Ronit Levin Delgado, Daniel Myers, and Jan Jeremy Myers. Our amazing, amazing tech team, production manager and sound engineer Tom McLean, videographer, editor, extraordinaire, Jacob McCoy, and Zoom maestro and marketing assistant, Jonathan Myers. Yeah. I also want to thank the tireless efforts of Jean Tudorberg, who couldn't be here tonight, as she really uh, didn't feel she could be out in public, but she has worked tirelessly, um, not just in the last few weeks, but over the last year with getting me up to speed and keeping the office together. Thank you so much, Jean, for everything. And I'd like to thank the ushers tonight, Emily Cohn and Sheila Abate. And last but very not least, the new Shul Vod, Michael Edelman, Barry Adler, Edivihis Cruz, Mikal Finkelstein, Beverly Israeli, Ricky Long, Rob Milam, Judy Miner, Allison Schlanger, David Schoenberger, Greg Shatan, Suzanne Tick, and Adam Zucker. Thank you, everyone. Couldn't do it without you.
Okay, quick announcements. I know it's gotten late. Tomorrow morning, beginning at 10.30, Rabbi Misha will lead a meditation and discussion about Black Lives Matter in the Palestinian context with special guests from Israel and Palestine, including his father, the renowned scholar and Israeli prize winner, David Shulman. The service will include original poetry, an English reading of the Haftarah, and a conversation led by New Shul community members who participated in the Black Lives Matter Cheruta Learning Pod. Tomorrow afternoon, we will gather here again at the farm and via Zoom, beginning at 4 p.m. for Yiska, which will include an opportunity to share stories about your loved ones who have passed. At 5 p.m., Rabbi Misha will leave Mincha, including a Torah reading by a recent Bats Mitzvah. The second part of the extraordinary Hannah play we saw tonight, poetry and a yogic body, body relaxation scan to prepare us for Nila, the closing prayer of the day. At 6 p.m., we'll begin Nila, which will be filled with the music of this amazing ensemble of musicians featuring Frank London again on trumpet. And a special note, it's worth coming simply for the Moroccan version of the hymn El Nora Alila, which is sung only once a year at this particular time. There is room tomorrow night. If you want to come back, please just let me know or Jean at info at neutral.org. And there's lots of room under the tent tomorrow afternoon. So please come and we will have a safe but very lovely break, community breakfast at the very end. So I look forward to seeing everyone tomorrow night. Shana Tova. Uh, one more thank you I have is to Avia. I know you guys saw Avia dancing, but Avia has been helping me kind of involve the body in all of our prayers uh, throughout this high holiday season. Thank you. Um, one more song. Here we go. <laughs>